Welcome to Pennsylvania Newsmakers, and as always, thanks for watching. Well, if you haven't noticed, winter is coming. Let's get an update on the cost of your home heating bills. But first, child abuse and the statute of limitations, and what would it be a couple of weeks before the important midterm election? Nah, we're going to have to deal with that, and let's get to it. This is Pennsylvania Newsmakers, a fast-paced, unrehearsed weekly discussion with and about the leaders who shape your world. And now, here's your host, Terry Madonna. Well, let's start out with a couple of the state's leading journalists. Joining me as often is the case is John Mysick. He's the editorial page editor of the Patriot News and Penn Live. You can follow him. We'll put his uh, Twitter handle up there by John L. Mysick. Uh, He's, uh, his tweets are really fascinating, but more importantly, they're, 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 they're significant because you provide a lot of great updates. Katie Meyer, she's the Capitol Bureau Chief with WITF, and I also, also always say Pennsylvania Public Radio. That works for you, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's a real thing. <laughs> all right, Katie, and we'll put her uh, Twitter handle. I think I got all of this yeah. modern oh, language absolutely. up. Twitter handle. Oh, yeah. All right, here we go. There was a huge expectation after the grand jury report that... Uh, over 300 clerics, priests in the Catholic Church, the argument was made by the grand jury that they abused over a thousand, a thousand young folks in this state. The legislature met the House and the Senate trying to work out something to expand the statute of limitations. Take it. What, first of all, what's the statute of limitations and what did the legislature not do? So there is some agreement uh, among legislators. They want to expand the statute, basically get rid of the statute of limitations for cases going forward so that people who are abused as children before, they only had a pretty limited amount of time right. to you know, file suit until they turned 30. Or, 30, that's yeah. what I thought, yeah. So, and that's, uh, you know, it's restrictive. A lot of people wouldn't come forward in that time. So they're going to get rid of that going forward. They are going to raise the cap for the amount of like, damages people can sue for. But there is a provision in this bill that uh, has really caused a lot of acrimony between the Senate and the House, specifically Senate Republicans. Um, the House passed a version of it that would have opened a two-year window for retroactive lawsuits. So mm -hmm. people who, like, for whom the statute of limitations has already limited them, they couldn't legally sue would be able to sue within that two-year window. And right, be able so to two sue. additional years. Yep. Statue of limitations gone. You were abused as a child. Let's say, blah blah blah. You're now an adult. You could sue. Is that? Do I have that right? Exactly. Yes. And so the House opened that up, or they wanted to open that up, pass the bill over to the Senate, and the Senate has had a really hard time concurring on that. There are, you know, senators in both parties who would like to. Mostly, most of the Democrats do want to. Sure. But um, Senate President Pro Tem Joe Scarnati is one of the leading opponents of this provision. He has, you know, said various things. He's claimed that it's unconstitutional. He still thinks it might be unconstitutional um, to open a retroactivity window. He thinks it would bankrupt churches. Mm -hmm. And so what happened last night was there was this like sort of clinch point between the two caucuses. This is the last day that they were scheduled to be in for this session. And they couldn't do it. Basically, Scarnati floated a bill that would have made a retroactivity window, but it would only apply to individuals individuals, not institutions. You know, a lot of the uh, people on the other side said he was siding with churches. So right, that's kind of right. where they left it. They didn't pass anything. Good, good, good update. So, John, here's the point. The, this legislature is history. Yep. Mm. And so all the things that Katie was talking about, even the changes they can agree on, were not put in a piece of they, they did not get through both houses of the legislature. Right, so everything that, that does right? not get through either chamber and making it to Governor Wolf's desk dies at the end of the term, yeah. which means it needs to be reintroduced in the next legislative session. Um, you know, this is one of four recommendations, Terry, that was included in Josh Shapiro's, the, rather, the grand jury the attorney, report the released attorney by Attorney General uh, Shapiro's office. Um, I think, can you correct me on this, there is, they did lift the statute on the criminal statute of limitations as well, so there's no statute there, yes, I think, yes, right? So, right? So criminal charges, they, there's now, there used to be a window on criminal charges, now you can, there's now, they've, they've lifted the criminal statute. And that's, been done so in, and that's in law. And that's in law. So that's at least something, that's at least one good to come out of this. Okay, the, pro, well, the, 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 the thing that's poisonous about the Scarnani proposal that emerged last night is that, it would have, as Katie said, it would have allowed people to sue individuals and not institutions. The problem is, is that nearly all of the priests who are named in the Shapiro report, are dead, and you can't sue the dead. So mm -hmm. it, it was sort of a, it was sort of a hollow gesture. Right. I got it. 
Yeah, I mean, does, both of you, you've covered the legislature for a while. Initially, when all of this broke, you would have thought that this would have been, A, a major priority, number two, that there, they would have easily been able to reach some kind of consensus. And I know it's controversial about the window and the retroactivity and what that all means. As they come back now in the news, when they come back, well, it seems like this all could die off, right? And not have the same intent. John's followed this, that you know, doesn't have, may not have the same intensity. Well, I will note that it's not technically dead yet. They did get their last scheduled day this week, but you know they could come back. They after, have until after November. the election. They, I mean, they could come back before the election. Still, there's a couple of weeks left, and yes, they could do what's called a lame duck or a yeah. signy die session afterward. More that likely rare. that than coming back before the election, yeah. right, John? They, they, they have been loath to do these lame duck sessions yeah. after the election for the yeah, last of years, the last couple really. of years, right? Well, they were criticized for coming back after the election when there was no political pressure on them this doing. This, this yeah. is both We're a major out of time. policy. Go ahead. This is a major policy and moral failing on the part of the legislature okay. to not address this. Um, maybe they'll try to find a way to fix it. Right now, it doesn't look particularly good. All right. Well, let, let, we're going to run to a break. When we come back. Let's do a little update on the governor's election and the U.S. Senate election. We'll see where they stand with our uh, uh, top reporters. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by the Pennsylvania Chamber of Business and Industry, the statewide voice of business, and by the Pennsylvania State Education Association and Partners for Public Education, bringing the power of a great education to our schools, our students, and our communities. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is brought to you by the Pennsylvania Highway Information Association, the go-to source to learn about transportation projects and issues. Please visit pahighwayinfo.org. And by the Pennsylvania Manufacturers Association. Business in Pennsylvania is our business. Welcome back with Katie Meyer and John Meisick, both reporters. And what, this guy sitting across from me is also an editorial page editor, but he still write, he still reports. All right, John, <clears throat> let's start with the governor's election. I mean, the, the, every week there's some, I mean, it's not a revelation about an issue. It's about the personalities and the nature of the campaigns. Do I got that about right? Is there a campaign? Is there, that's, go ahead. I've talked about that, <laughs> explore that. And we're no. talking about former state senator Scott Wagner. He's the Republican and obviously Governor Wolf seeking a second term. Go yeah, ahead. We're less than three weeks out here from Election Day, Terry. Uh, and Scott Wagner from York County is trying as hard as he possibly can to make a campaign out of it. Um, Governor Tom Wolf, the Democratic incumbent, running silent, running deep, not doing a whole lot in the way of political events, but is running around the state doing those things that come with the advantage of the incumbency. Uh, right, where the policy, what that where means. the policy and the political intersect, handing out checks. There you go. Doing That's ribbon cutting. Point getting sort of gratuitous free press. Um, Senator Wagner last week having sort of a viral meltdown moment uh, standing in front of a billboard down there in York County uh, threatening to stomp on the governor's face with golf spikes. Um, just a bizarro moment. I played and golf. I, I didn't know we wear spikes anymore, but I, I won't go I, there. I, go I, ahead. I, go I, ahead. I, I'm told people don't wear spikes anymore. Um, <laughs> what I do on a golf course is more into landscaping anyway. But I mean, you know, so this billboard was put up by this progressive group called PA Spotlight, taking Spotlight, Scott right. Wagner to task for suing uh, delinquents Delinquent. at, at Penn West, which is, I mean, companies have to recoup bills yeah. somehow. Yeah, but the people the, who didn't pay their bills, sometimes it, you have to pay for that. The company went right. after them, and it's, and it's not it's not unusual. But no, the, the thing right. it was is they put this billboard in such a place where they knew Scott Wagner would have to pass it all the time, uh. hoping that it would eventually set him off. And guess what? It set him off. Yeah. I mean, you can parse this any number of ways. You can ask who on the campaign thought it would be a great idea for him to do a Facebook Live video in front of this billboard. Do you think that was a campaign decision or a personal decision? No, it was a campaign decision to do, the, to do the video, I'm sure. Somebody had to hold the phone, right? right but, well, but, yeah, but there could be, you know, staffers do what yeah. they're told in campaintsing. No, it's unclear you know. why that happened. It yeah. is. But uh, I think, you know, I, to John's point and to your point as well, I think this draws a very clear line between how these two people are campaigning, right? Wolf really doesn't, he just
just has to rely on his record, which isn't like there's no gaping wounds well, there. Right? Uh, but I agree. Is there a campaign? I mean, you go, the governor doesn't even acknowledge that there's a campaign. The other thing is, look at the disparity in the in the contributions to their campaigns. Yeah. I mean, uh, Wolf has a four, four to five to one advantage in terms of money. Uh, Scott Wagner, when the report came out a couple of weeks ago, had, what, less than two million bucks in the bank. Yeah, Take 1. that. 1.8 or 9. Yeah. I mean, listen, what Wolf is able to do with that money is advertise. And that has been crucial. That was crucial to him for his first oh, time running for office. He had I'll that say. Jeep ad. Yeah. And then now it, it really is, you know, people know who he is. They don't not trust him. And, you know, he's been the one who's been setting the tone. He's been the person who gets to introduce Scott Wagner to voters, right. I, not I, Wagner. Himself. I put it another way. If you want to take down an incumbent, you got to have a reason that the voters care about. Yeah. And my point about it, John, is simply this. Scott Wagner has not found an issue that resonates with the voters to defeat an incumbent. Am I right or wrong? No, no about you're, that? I mean, you're right. I mean, he's well, he, said, he said Governor Wolf hasn't signed budgets. There's like three people, and we're all sitting at this table who care about that kind of thing. But no we, state but employees no, were laid it does, off. It doesn't resonate. The, you know, he, yeah. are there more, is there more money for schools? Yes. Yes. Check. Is there wine at Wegmans? Yes. Check. <laughs> can can parents with epileptic kids now get mar medical marijuana? Yeah. Check. You know, some, there's, you need to find that compelling narrative, and Scott Wagner yeah. hasn't found one. And the same, let's turn quickly to the U. And by the way, Scott, uh, Governor Tom Wolf has a double digit lead in the average of the polls, and so does Senator Casey running yeah. against Congressman Lou Barletta. Is it a little bit of the same situation? Barletta hasn't given the voters a reason to deny Senator Casey a third term? Yeah, I think that's absolutely it. Senator Casey is one of the, probably the best known politician in Pennsylvania, right? Mm -hmm. And Barletta has struggled this entire time with raising his name recognition enough for him to even sort of be a player in the race. Yeah. And, you know, as you said, fundraising advantage, the polling is pretty skewed towards Casey. So, yeah, I think, you know, those are very similar races that you're yeah. seeing. Go ahead. No, I mean, we had the Q3 fundraising boards come out just this week, and Barletta had pulled even with Casey for the quarter, but he's, quarter. he's still down six to one. Yeah. Um, you know, what, he ha what Barletta has on hand is like an hour and a half of Philadelphia TV at, at most, mm -hmm. um, and there's so, much go there's so much noise in that market between the governor's race and all these congressional races and the stuff in New Jersey that you really can't penetrate. And if you can't penetrate in Philadelphia, you can't penetrate statewide. Yeah, the Senate race is really, I mean, the to say it's low key is being, I mean, they're doing commercials that are somewhat controversial. The commercials right. in, this, in, in, in this election cycle <laughs> seem to be a bit more controversial. And, and we talk about commercials, we have that moment of drama this week, um, Senator Casey airing a series right. of advertisements on pre-existing conditions, three ads, um, one of them featuring a woman from Mannheim Township in Lancaster County whose right. twin daughters were diagnosed with cancer. Um, Senator Barletta, or sorry, excuse me, Representative Barletta calling foul on that because he right. said, I told Senator Casey that my own grandson is right. being treated for cancer. He needs to take the ad down. Right. Casey took it down in, in the scranton in Wilkesbury scranton, market, yeah. which is sort of a tacit admission yeah. that it was, it was uncool. On the other hand, you know, we wouldn't be talking about Mr. Barletta's grandson had Mr. Barletta not yeah. started talking about his grandson. So there's some right. politics going on fi back and fi forth. Final there. word on this. Are, are, do you get the sense, I mean, you, you get around the state, you in public radio, what you do. There just doesn't seem to be a lot of compelling interest in this race, or am I wrong about it? I think you can tell by how much outside fundraising is coming in, right? I mean, I, this is, has not been a key race to people who watch these things from a national level. I think that's pretty fair to say. So, yeah. All right. Well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to we're going to switch from that to the cost of your heating bill. Are prices going to go up or down? We're going to find out. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is brought to you by the Pennsylvania Credit Union Association. Pennsylvania Credit Unions, where people are worth more than money. To find a credit union that is right for you, check out ibelong.org. And by the Energy Association of Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania's energy information source. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is brought to you by the Association of Pennsylvania State College and University Faculties, representing the faculty and coaches who are devoted to providing quality public higher education for Pennsylvania's college students. 
Well, Terry Fitzpatrick joins me as often is the case. He's the president and CEO of the Energy Association of Pennsylvania. Uh, he's our go-to guy when it comes to energy and heating prices. And as I indicated in my promo, winter's coming, home heating prices, are they going up, are they going down? And we don't care where you get your heating from, this guy's going to help us understand whether you're going to pay more or less or perhaps about the same. It's also a former uh, Pennsylvania Public Utilities Commissioner. I got that right, don't I? Yes, you do, Terry. All right, Thanks. Terry, Terry, we got to go sure. around on this. <laughs> All right, so overall, let's talk about the impact energy costs for the consumers and regardless of what they use in terms of their energy, whether it's heating oil, whether it's electricity, take it away. Right. Well, the federal government puts out projections as, as we head into the winter. They're projecting that you might pay a little bit more for heating this winter. Uh, energy prices are up slightly, electricity, natural gas, heating oil prices up a bit more. Yeah. Um, but you know, those are projections based upon the weather, what the prices of the energy itself is. So it could be a, like a 5% increase in your bill, but, but it depends what the weather is, of course. Yeah. So. Are they higher or lower in this day and age than they were a decade, two decades ago overall? That, that's a really important point, Terry, because these prices go up and down year to year. But if you go back a decade, the wholesale price of natural gas and electricity is about half of what it was a decade ago. And that's because of the profound impact that the Marcellus Shale <clears throat> gas supplies have had on all forms of energy. So let me, let me put it this way to you. Because natural gas is available and it's cheaper, let's be blunt. Right. Does that mean the other forms of energy like electricity that they've worked out more efficiencies to lower their costs or? Well, with electricity, electricity prices at the wholesale level tend to follow the price of natural gas. And that's because natural gas has become such an important fuel used to uh, fuel generating stations that, that generate electricity. Yeah. Now you have a, you know, if we have any time in the next segment, I want to talk about TMI. Of course, we right. all remember the famous meltdown, you know, during the uh, governorship of Dick Thornburg. Correct. I think I got, that was a long, yes. long time ago. You and I were about 10 years right. old, I think, back in, back, <laughs> Well, back, that's, that's <laughs> a little bit of a stretch back, there. Back in those days. We were younger. But I do want to, I do want to come back to that. But, at the, but the other point that you like to make, and we do this yearly, which is an important update, is there are things that people could, can do, and it's very easy to go through life without thinking very much about this. You know, we're all busy, we're all running around, living our own lives. Tell, tell me, what, 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 what should people do? Yeah, obviously, people can't control the weather. They can't really <laughs> control the price sure. of these fuels. But there are, that's, it's a great point, Terry. There are a lot of things that they can do. Now, number one, I would say conserve. Um, things like turning, or just basic conservation tips, like turning your thermostat down, looking for any air leaks at your home, around doors, around windows, sealing them. Um, you know, things like uh, getting your, your furnace serviced. That, yeah. that can be very important. So it's more efficient. So, it, so it operates more efficiently, changing the filter. Yeah. Over the longer term, there's bigger things you can think about doing, you know, involving insulation, um, trading yeah. in maybe your old refrigerator for a newer one. And our members, uh, uh, our electric utility members have programs for this where they'll give you rebates to do that to replace some of your lighting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, budget billing is a very important thing for a lot of customers too. To, so you tend to um, even your bills out yeah. over the course of a year. One of the things that we do is, because we're under 13 covers at night, I'm exaggerating, <laughs> is that we turn, the, we, 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 we turn our electricity down. Right. Mm -hmm. We turn it down when we go to bed, three or four degrees, right. and then we can put it back up in the morning. And when we go away, we always adjust it. I, I, I do mean, the same thing, by the way. And yeah, I mean, it seems like that's a relatively simple thing to do. Yes, it is. But that, that has a big impact on your bill. For every degree you turn your, your thermostat down, it can save as much as 3%. So if you can turn it down 3, 4 degrees, you could be looking at 10% on your heating bill. It's yeah, very well, important. And, and that's, that's not insignificant. No. We're, going to, we're going to run to a break, but there are, there, there are you know, customers have, have a problem keeping up with their utility right. bills. There, there is some assistance. We want to talk about that. And then I'm going to come back to TMI. That's Three Mile Island.
This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is brought to you by the Pennsylvania Medical Society. Inspired physicians committed to the good health of Pennsylvanians and the advancement of the practice of medicine. And by the Pennsylvania Healthcare Association, the future of long-term care. Well, we're talking about energy, winter's coming, your bill, uh, your, what, what, what you're likely to face in terms of prices. Terry Fitzpatrick, Energy Association of Pennsylvania, you're having trouble paying your bill. There's assistance programs out there. Take it. Yeah, the, the biggest thing is if you're having trouble paying your bill, contact your utility. Don't, don't ignore the problem hoping it'll go away because there, there are a, a wide variety, really, of assistance programs that are available to people. Um, if you, depending on your income levels, you might be able to get a reduced bill. Uh, you, you can get some help even uh, forgiving your arrearages if you, if, you, if you stay on the payment plan that you're given. Um, there's money available through federal programs. There's money available to help to help put um, uh, insulation in your home so you can so you use less. Mm -hmm. Really, there are a variety of things, but you have to you have to call the utility and ask. But one that we talked help. about over the years is LIHEAP. Yes, you and I have chatted for about that. Right, and that and that's one of these programs that provides assistance. Yes, it is. It's a federal program, the Low Income Home Energy Assistance Program. Okay. There's money available for that, but really the utilities have their own programs. That there's even more money in the utility programs. Um, really, there's hundreds of millions of dollars available statewide to, to try to help people who struggle to pay their bills. All right, back in the day, as they say, when Dick Thornburg was governor, wow, that's a long time ago. There was obviously the problem with Three Mile Island, you know, the, uh, the bubble. There was concern about, you know, what would happen to a nuclear power plant. A lot of people vacated the area for a couple of days. They've had an enormous amount of problems, almost threatening to shut down their operation. Take it. Yeah. Well, they're, they're losing money because uh, they're on that plant because a couple things. Um, one is the, the most obvious thing is just the price of natural gas, as I said. That has gone down s so much and it's been low for such a long period of time that uh, TMI has trouble competing with natural gas fired plants. Mm -hmm. the, the other component of it though too is uh, currently um, owners of nuclear plants don't get any compensation for the fact that the electricity they provide doesn't produce any carbon dioxide emissions at all. Right. I mean, if we're concerned about climate change, climate change you, can yeah. you can make an argument they ought to get some compensation or have some advantage, but because we don't regulate carbon dioxide emissions, we're, we're trying to solve that problem by mandating other right. technologies. Uh, but if they if if they did get some benefit from the fact that they don't re release any carbon dioxide, that that would help them to compete as well. So it's really a complicated mm -hmm. policy problem. Well, I want to thank you for coming in. I mean, I think this is an important update. We'll have you back and see exactly what transpires. And you're you were really right in saying, you know, it all depends on the weather. There's a number of variables that could come up. All right. We'll see you next week for another edition of Pennsylvania Newsmakers. And as always, stay well.